So <coughs> by going through this, we found this and we found this. Now there is no way out to find this and this. Doesn't matter what kind of combination you use, you will not be able to solve for those two unknowns using these three such equations. Right? So <coughs> the next step would be to look at each of these members by themselves. So you look at the top member. This is A, you have a force here, that's 60 pounds, that's B, then see this member coming in here, then this is D, we just found DX, that's 90 pounds, we don't know DY, so just put it there. Then we got the bottom member. At the bottom member, we don't <coughs> know GY, so we put it there the way it is. Then we found GX, and that's 90 pounds. You notice that I'm using positive sign, so I change the direction. It's no longer going this way. Okay, so that's for that. <coughs> Now we got two more members in between. So there is a member here, and there is a member between these two. Okay, let's see. E, F, J, and G. So there is a member here, so we take that member too. Okay, <coughs> now this member is AE. This member is CF. Now the first thing you notice is on AE that there is no force in between AE. But A is a pin and E is a pin. So this is going to act like a two force member. I mean there is a force at two points on the system and <coughs> therefore this is going to be either tension or compression. Same thing is true for CF. You got this joint and this joint, there is no force in between. So the forces will be only here and here. So that is another two force member. And <coughs> the force in that is going to be either tension or a compression. So <coughs> let's make some assumptions and let's make an assumption here that this is going to be compression. Now if it's a compression then the force in member is going to go like this and let's call that as F A E and F A E. So what we did was we assumed this to be in compression, then the unknown member force is going to be F A E and these are the directions. Then at here is going to exert a force with the same magnitude but in opposite direction. It's going to do the exact same thing here. It will be a force in opposite direction. Now this one I'm going to make an assumption that's in tension. I mean, this, those are just starting point. I mean, you could have, might as well make it compression. That doesn't make any difference. But the moment I make that assumption, then the force here has to go like this. And that's F C F. It's going to be same F C F. Then the point that connects the bottom member, there will be exact same force. Then there will be another force like this. So we get four different free bodies. That's the free body for member A, E. This is the free body for member C, F. Then you have the free body at the top of the member. 
then we have the free body for the bottom member. These are four distinct free body diagrams and you have a choice you could look at either one of them they all have to satisfy equations of equilibrium. Now this one is not going to give you anything. I mean all it gives you is that F A E is F A E goes to 0 and that's all you get out of that case. Same thing happens here. All it gives you is that FCF minus FCF goes to zero. There is not a whole lot of information in those two members. But if I look at the bottom member, you have one unknown here, one unknown here, and one unknown here. The three unknowns, and we could write three equations. So <coughs> you look at the bottom one, let's take this angle as theta then tangent theta would be 2 divided by 1.5 that's 4 over 3 which means the <coughs> sine theta is 